Uh, see, how do I want to intro this? Okay. Ready? Glad, glad I could help. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Welcome to the table. My name is Max, and I am here joined by Doolin, my co-host, and also Jazz from The Lobby of Hobbies. If you haven't seen him, check out the link in the description and go to his channel. He has an excellent channel, and we are very happy for him to be here today. Uh, go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself, just briefly, Jazz, and, and why you're here. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. Uh, never mind. Okay, go ahead, <laughs> No, Jazz. I don't care about you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, First and foremost, thank you, Doolin. Thank you, Max, for even having me on here at the Table Knots. I'm glad to be at your guys' table, um, or tables, can I say that? Um, and thanks for coming yeah, to my yeah, table. absolutely. <laughs> well, at the Lobby of Hobbies, the idea is enter, share, and discover. We want people to come in while we share the games we enjoy in hopes that they discover something worth checking out. Honestly, it's just about bringing more more diversity, just spreading the, the hobby to just people in general from all walks of life who have never mm -hmm. even heard of what the, the modern board gaming hobby is. They think it's just Monopoly and Sorry and all that other stuff. We want to just spread their um, spread their knowledge Wait, of what so this hobby so is it's about. it's not? Or, okay, uh, okay. It, 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 <laughs> no, it's not it, just it, Monopoly and Sorry. It <laughs> is, but it's just not in my collection, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's pretty yeah, much what I, it is. It's well, just I behind you and I don't see it. I don't oh yeah, <laughs> I, I think honestly the only one in my collection is Clue. That's it. Hey, um, but yeah, Clue is hey, good. Clue's great. Clue is good. Yeah, it's great. I mean, hey. awkward guests is better, but Clue is good. Awkward guests I can't find. Clue. How about that? Oh, it's on CSI. It's on Cool Stuff Inc. <laughs> oh, I'll check it out Until right this video after goes this. Up and then yeah, it'll be gone. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. have that shut up and sit down power. It's now sold out on, <laughs> <laughs> on CSI. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah, five yeah. copies that they have. We love your mission statement, Jazz, and we've loved your channel for quite some time. Of course, we knew we had to get you on the channel and work with you. What we didn't really plan for, though, is that your first video on the channel was going to be a draft about your favorite type of games and a game type that neither Doolin and I are very familiar with at all. So we are fully expecting your foray into the Table Knots community to be an ultimate destruction of us both. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad that you guys can step into my world for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, um, <laughs> but, um, so, all this but, is going to be is a big old advertisement for Lobby of Hobbies yeah. for everyone to just leave <laughs> us <laughs> and go to his channel. <laughs> no, honestly, I love what you guys are doing. Like, um, you know, I've been... When I saw that you guys even had your own channel, because I saw you guys over on Quackalope, you know, playing playing some games, and mm. I was like, oh wow, Max has his own channel now. Subscribe and notifications. That's exactly what I did, and I've been following yes. you guys. I, lo I love what you guys <laughs> are doing. I, I I love everything you guys. The, the 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 comedic aspect of everything, you know, it's it's a blast to just sit down and watch your videos. Um, so I enjoy it. And well, again, like I said, thanks for having me. Of course, of course, we're gonna have you back again and again as long as this doesn't go too poorly. Uh, <laughs> all right, so what we're doing here is a, a fantasy draft of sorts, a draft of worker placement board games. What that means is we've split this up into five different categories, which I'll run you through in a minute. We're Quarterback, gonna, halfback, uh -huh, yeah, mm -hmm, running just back. Just like yep, that, yep. yep, kickers. <laughs> yeah, we're each going to run through this category and pick one game, which then removes it from the entire list, even for the next and following categories. Then, at the end of the video, we're going to compile our list of five games and have you, the commenters, vote on which you think is best and who you think drafted the best list of worker placement games. Y'all got it? Make sense? Fair enough. What do we win, Max? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Yet. Uh -huh. I'll think on that. Uh -huh. I'll think on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, running through our five <laughs> categories, we are going to start with the best for beginners. A beginner introductory worker placement game following like me that, and max that's right <laughs> <laughs> awesome <laughs> following that we're gonna have the best worker placement games that play well at two uh this can be two player specific games but it's not limited to that this can be a two to six player game that just plays well at two that's all that we care about then thematic games the worker placement games that really get you into the theme of that game and show it in its mechanics then the best art, the most striking visually, table presence, however you want to quantify it, worker placement games. And last but not least, the best worker placement games that are outside of the BGG Top 100 worker placement category. That makes sense. 
I think we've it got does. it. It does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, discussed before we started, Jazz has picked his spot. We're going to let the guest pick their spot where they go in order. He has picked the middle spot, so he never has to wait until the end to pick his game. And then he's got a number in his head between 1 and 10. Doolin and I are going to pick a number. And whoever's closest gets to decide whether they want to start or whether they want to end. Okay? Doolin, now, what is, is it your the number? closest without going over? Nah, closest in general. Closest in general. Okay. Oh, it's between one and ten? Yeah, one and ten. Five. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the easiest pick. Uh, four. It is seven. Dang it. So, <laughs> dueling. <laughs> For some I'm going to go first. I thought it was seven. <laughs> I thought in my head that Sure you it was did. Seven. That's why you said four, right? You know, I think next time we need to have six games here because you going first means you go first three times. I and do. I go last I three times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think but next that, time that's all because I won the game, Max. I won the game. I have to fix that next time. <laughs> all right. So Doolin, start us off. Your best All right. worker placement game. I'm for so beginners. glad that I get to go first because my god, I know what you like, picked. I, I, I have it in my head. How do you know how to pick? I just know it because everyone knows. Yeah, everyone knows. Yes, the chat knows. Everybody can. Know every, everyone, know. everybody watching can see it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I was like, can you, can you, can you guess what what the yep. what the game pick is? Yep. Yeah, it's gonna be Stone Age <laughs> by Z Man Games. Uh, it it was actually my introduction to worker placements. It was a great. Uh, fun first experience for me. Uh, I played it with a group of people who had never experienced worker placements, and by the end of the game, I actually it ended up crushing them all because I I just loved the like the mechanics of it. Um, I think I watched uh, Will Wheaton play this game. Probably. Am I I'm and and because yes. that was like when I was really into his videos and wanted to buy every game that he introduced to me. Uh, but yeah. this was a really great introduction to the. Uh, the mechanics are pretty pretty light in terms of like it was easy to understand within minutes uh, and yeah great great introduction to to worker placements. I've actually never played it, probably really? should, yeah. but I never have. Yeah, it's a well, solid right, twenty minutes solid from your pick. house. Listen, I, I what, think that's a solid taking, solid guys? solid pick. All right, so it's funny that wasn't on my list at all because Ooh. I knew it was going to be on one of your lists and I kind of wanted to give you guys <laughs> it was also on give you guys, mine, even though uh, I've never played it <laughs> give you guys a layup a little bit but um so okay. I'm actually going to go uh, I'm going to go with my number three pick here that I have and it's going to be Hanga from Haba Games now Haba Games Ooh. puts out some some really good like family weight type games and I've recently played this I want to say last month um, and my wife and I played a couple games of this and it has that same premise of Stone Age but Hanga is like the saber tooth tiger that sits in the middle of the board and you're not actually yeah. putting out workers but you're actually everybody gets a hand of I think it's two discs like little um they're like circular cards um and on there it's divided as like a little x and then in each quadrant are different hands and dependent on how many hands are in those quadrants you have four placements of placing those discs on the board and dependent on how many hands are in certain actions allows you to collect that many resources of whatever the case may be cool. or um or having um but you have to also pay attention to Hanga. You have to like give him, you know, I guess a little bit of petting because if you don't, he comes onto your player board and starts eating your resources. Oh, um, that's so cool. It's 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 very lightweight, super family. I want to think it's like Stone Age, like you know, zero point five because it's it has that same premise of you know being in the Stone Age, hmm. but it's definitely much more introductory than stone age so i would say for beginners this is one that you can teach to young kids and then this is one that you can like i said my wife and i played this and we enjoyed it this is what i would introduce to people of the hobby and that's it's hanga it, it's definitely one to mm. check out that's you cool know, if, you ha if you have young kids under the age of 10 yeah this is what i would give them i mean my worker placement uh, knowledge is probably equal to a kid under 10 so that sounds like something that would probably work well for me so how do you spell hanga H O N G A. <laughs> Added to the Amazon cool, uh, shopping cart, probably. Right. <laughs> awful pick. Yes. Awful pick. Awful pick. Yeah, agreed. Yes. Terrible. Don't don't Both don't don't pick. Yeah, yeah this yeah, whole yeah, Stone yeah. Age theme is just—I don't even get it. 
What if I told you there was a worker placement game about dungeons and dragons called Lords of Waterdeep? Uh, mm, okay. This was actually Solid genuinely pick. like the second hobby board game outside of Catan and Munchkin that I ever played. I think I played this at the first game night I ever went to with a couple local people. Uh, it's pretty good. I was very new to it. I didn't really, you know, I still wasn't 100% grasping it, but I think it was a really good intro because it wasn't, uh, I, I definitely think something like Honga is probably better for the younger age people. But as far as, as far as a theme that can, can appeal to so many people, I mean, if you're into D and D, uh, and want to make that crossover into board games. I can't think of anything really better than a and a, a d board game and one that's actually good. And this gives you that worker placement, and it's also quite thematic. Uh, I do wish that, like, you know, it wasn't just squares and the meeples were actually, uh, like, the people, which I know you can buy off, like, Etsy or something, but doesn't come with the box. Um, but I think it does quite a bit just to pull you into that, and it gives you these quests that you need to complete, and it's just it's just enough to make me, like, look past the fact that this is a strategy board game and and dig in deep to the theme and just how cool it is, essentially. The cool yeah, factor yeah. is good for the intro level. But that's my pick. That's another now, solid that's pick. That's cool. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty good. Arc, or I had a few others. I'm not, I didn't mean to mention it. Mm-mm, didn't mean to mention it just then. <laughs> I had a few others on my list. Uh, but Lords of Waterdeep is what took the cake. I, I was actually going to go Stone Age, even though I never played it. But, you know, y'all both decided to go in that realm, and I just decided that I was going to I was gonna throw a curveball and stay away from the Stone Age. All right, and that is our list of beginner-level worker placement games. On to two players. Okay, I start this category. Best at two. Uh, I have two listed, but I I'm think so I, have to, I have to go with the one that I've actually played and I think is genuinely so good, and that is Targi. It is Targi. great. Okay. I, okay. Yeah, I love Targi. Uh, I've only played it twice, actually. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly recent acquisition to me, and it's been one that's sitting on my shelf of shame for a long time, uh, but we finally played it. And uh, I mean, I like two player games. My wife and I would play games fairly regularly. Two player is not an uncommon player count for me. Um, but you often see in two player games these games that are uh, real fast, you know, 20 to 30 minute experiences that don't that are that are good. They're fun, but they don't necessarily give you the the full experience of a board game night. And I think Targi does an excellent job of fitting into that 60 minute range where you really feel like you've just played a full game. Uh, it's long enough to develop a strategy. It's long enough to counter your opponents. It's easy and simple. Um, and, you know, the, the border is always the same every time. So you have a good idea going in. Only the cards in the middle are going to be swapped. Uh, essentially, you are, it's very mean. It's very mean. Oh, you yeah. are taking your little uh, people and putting them on the outside edge. And then wherever they meet, wherever they cross, like their axis come across is what you get in the middle. But you can't place directly opposite somebody. So if I go this place and Danielle knows I want this piece out of that area, she's going to stop me by going to the place on the Y axis instead of the X axis. And uh, it's just a really good time, really solid worker placement and excellent two player game. I mean, this would be in a top 10 two player games for me list, excluding worker placements. Hmm. That's a solid cool. pick. That, it's actually on my top 10 two player list games. Yeah, um, it's, it's that so good. good. So good. It, All right, Jazz, you're my, up next. It's, it's on my list here. That was my my pick. Um, oh yes, <laughs> yes. Oh stole wow, stole pick. one. Let's go. <laughs> but I'm gonna. That's I'm what gonna you get for mention, going middle, Jazz. <laughs> I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna mention one that. Um, re- oh, speaking of Targi, you got to play it. Have you played it on Board Game Arena? Um, yeah, it's awesome. Uh-uh. All right, we'll get a chance. We'll play it together. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll do it. But. Um, yeah, my pick is one that I've uh, played recently. I've learned it. It's been on my shelf of shame for a while, um, or shelf of opportunity, and I had the opportunity to play it. <laughs> and this this one is Grand Austria Hotel. Um, I knew that's what it was going to be. It's Grand it's Austria a Hotel. yeah, it's a a dice placement game. 
um, where pretty much you are uh, running like a small cafe hotel type thing and people are at your cafe, um, visitors, you're drafting visitors to come into your cafe and they're looking for certain requirements and they're going to grant you different resources, different things if you fulfill their their order. Um, but after they mm. pretty much eat in your cafe, you want them to spend the night in your um, hotel, but you have to be able to open different rooms and have rooms pretty much open for them and on different levels. So it's like almost like a tableau building game because if you can get them into your room, um, they will grant you those, you know, extra resources or whatever the case may be, sometimes victory points, sometimes extra coins. Um, the economy in the game is very tight. This game plays up to four. But interesting enough, it plays best at two, and it's probably a game that I will only play at two. The reason being is um, wow. when you set the hmm. when when you set the turn order, um, you know each person every round gets two uh, two actions or two two turns in a round before you go to the next round. But it's like a snake draft in essence. So player one goes first, player two, player three, player four, and then player four would go again, then player three, then player two, then player okay. one for that round. So therefore, if you go first in a round, you have to wait around. So it's like it drags out. Um, so that's why playing it at yeah. two is best yeah. because because the turns work, work great like that. So yeah, that would be my pick, Grand Austria Hotel, and that's from Lookout Games. I That's knew cool. the moment you said that it was a, a shelf of opportunity game. I knew what it was. I, I, yeah, I, it was either yeah. that or another one, which I'm not going to mention because it very well may <laughs> pop up here later in your list. Uh, I think Possibly. it starts with the letter A and ends with the letter Y. We'll see if that happens. Uh, we'll see. Arnaki? Arnaki? Uh-huh. You got it. You got it. <laughs> All right, Dooley. All right. Yes. Okay. So my turn. Uh, I knew this one wasn't going to be picked by either one of you. Because it's a bad uh, this, game, right? No, it's a great game. It's a great game. Uh, it's a game that is currently on Kickstarter, uh, and I got to play it with Jesse. And uh, this ah, is a game that... I know what it is. The only complaint that we had, because we, we actually brought it out, uh, and we weren't really sure, like, is this game going to click? So we played it off camera, actually. Uh, and the only complaint by the end of playing this entire game was that it lasted a little too long at three players. And so I can only think that this game would be perfect at two. And that is Meeples and Monsters. And this game is fantastic. It is actually both a worker placement and bag building game, uh, which I love uh, any type of bag building game. Like I, I think that that mechanic is just really not used as often. Uh, and every time you add to it uh, these uh, different D and D themed meeples that uh, are clerics and wizards and barbarians and like all of those different things. Every time you pull them out, you get really really excited because they can be placed on the board in areas that you previously couldn't have gone to. And so as the game keeps going, you're unlocking new areas, and it, it's a really really fun game with the with the the whole goal being there's these four like massive monster boss monsters at the top. And those are the ones that are going to get you the most victory points. So you're going to be going after them as quickly as possible. And uh, you, you just feel it's this really great uh, thematic game that I, I really enjoy. Not that it was my thematic pick. I just think that this would be great at two players. It's very punny. This one is awesome. What do you mean? What do you mean? What have do you played I mean? it? I said it's very punny. There's lots of puns. Isn't the healer have like wood glue? Isn't that his thing? Oh, like, yeah, I mean, like, all of them, like, even in their pictures, like, they look like they were crafted by kids, which is really neat. Like, I, I like that a lot, too. Now, are you backing this one? Dooley? I am backing this one. Okay, good, so I don't have to. Guys, what were you going to say about it? <laughs> no, it, it's incredible. I've played it, and I played it at two, and um, I would think, Max, uh, if you mentioned Lords of Waterdeep, this is Lords of Waterdeep meets Orleans. Um, or well, Lords I've never of played Waterdeep. Orleans, but... I like bag yeah. builders. Yeah, so if you you haven't played Orleans, if you like bag builders, definitely check out Orleans. But this is a mix of that. If you get that Lords of Waterdeep feel, it is the from the makers, uh, uh, the designer of Champions of Midgard, which is a game that I loved. I had in my collection. I recently got rid of it, and it's honestly probably in my top 20 of all time. But the reason I got rid of it was because this one was coming out. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so you've backed it yeah. too, I presume. That's funny. That's funny. You know why? Because my most thematic game, if we're moving on to most thematic, oh is Champions of <laughs> Midgard. <laughs> For real, this. Uh, I 
Okay, so I told this to Max a bunch of times. I had to do a lot of research on, on yeah. worker placement games because beyond Stone Age uh, and Meeples and, Mo and Monsters and uh, a little bit of this game, uh, and I still don't know how to pronounce it correctly. Agricola. Um, I, I haven't played a lot, so I, I probably watched about 20 to 30 hours of stuff this last <laughs> oh week. On, and that's not an exaggeration. I, I, I watched... A lot of stuff from a lot of different people and by far this one was one of the most interesting games uh, and it's it just sounds like a game that I would get really really excited playing uh, where you you know you're sending off these uh, these Vikings to go fight these north uh, like legendary monsters and like, like I, I just I, I I can see myself getting really really pumped playing this game uh, it's on a ton of people's like top games but the theme just continually jumped out at me speaking of oh, yeah. I, I would love to hear you talk about it jazz for just a moment if it was in yeah, your yeah, top yeah. 20 at one point in time i'd love to hear your thoughts on it no no not that it's it was it still is in my top 20 um right right it's just not in my it's just not in my collection anymore but this is one where you know i had everything for it play mat you name it um but pretty much uh you have the board you're, you're pretty much going out to different spots you, you have um you're pretty much, you take the, everyone has an asymmetric power. So you're a Viking or a, you know, a Nordic Viking. And um, you have your workers and you're going out to various places on the board. You're trying to complete, in essence, like little contracts and different things. But you, you're you trying to acquire different dice onto your team. And like some of the dice are swordsmen. Some of them are axemen. Some of them are archers, depending on, you know, depending on what expansions you have. Um, and it's definitely play it with everything. You know, start off, play it with both expansions. It's that good. Um, and when you, you can go out and fight the different monsters. There's like trolls that if you don't fight the troll, the troll attacks the village and everybody gets shame, which is going to be negative points at the end of the mm. game. Um, but pretty much um, when you go to attack, you set which monsters you're going to fight, like which um, which warriors you're going to send to go into that battle. And some monsters, you can't, they can't uh, go. Like, so it says swordsmen can't fight, attack this guy. So you're sending your axemen and your archers over there and you roll the dice and you're trying to see how many hits you get and how many damage they take. And pretty much they, they deal damage back and forth. So you're going to have some of your dice die off. Um, and if you have the Valhalla expansion, they go to Valhalla, which is cool because then, you know, there's ways to score victory points with them going to Valhalla and create you know that's being awesome. able to, to complete things it is it is definitely an awesome thematic pick i don't even know why i did not think of that one it is good <laughs> it's yeah, good i was gonna say that I, i've not actually played it myself i do know a little bit about it i've got my dog over here trying to creep into the camera <laughs> Um, <laughs> hi granger uh but i i don't want to give you too much credit Doolin, but it does sound up my alley for the theme alone it does yeah sound really yeah cool no, it, it's the one that jumped out the out of the I almost said the page, but I didn't read information. I watched information <laughs> out of the screen at me every single time I saw it. All right, I'm really sad awesome. that I have to go last in this section because I'm afraid of you, Jazz. But tell me what you've picked. So my most thematic game is my number one game of all time. No, that's and why that I wanted from, to go no, it is. for you. <laughs> from, from Stonemeyer Games, and that is Viticulture. Um, and this is best played with the Tuscany expansion. It is that good. Um, if you want to feel like um, you are running your own wine vineyard and you're trying to complete orders, um, yeah, this is one of those games. Play it with the um, the mamas and papas. So you got to get the essential edition to play with the mamas and papas. Um, play it with the Tuscany expansion. I would say play the original base game first, and if you like it, just go right ahead and buy the Tuscany expansion. It's that good. It makes it that much better. But the um, wake up track at the beginning, you know, depending on which turn order you're going to go, and you know, if you go earlier, you're going to get less things for that round. But if you go later, you can get things like an, an extra worker to go. But it's 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 a great game. Um, you know, crush your grapes, make your wine drink some wine as you're playing it's just it's a good one um sorry max <laughs> yeah yeah this was this was on my list i never played it um but i knew you loved it and i know the yes. world loves it i mean it's just yes. so well loved that i had to make mm. this my pick unfortunately you stole it i will say i've uh i bought the app the day it came out on ios and i tried to play it i have no idea what i was doing and <laughs> I even did the tutorial and absolutely failed. I don't know. Still don't know how to play Viticulture. 
but I do want to buy it. It's another one that my wife has been interested in just based off theme alone. You know, we, we both have particular themes that draw us in. Um, and it's another one that she's been like, yeah, you should buy that. I'd love to play that. We try it out sometime, but it's just never got around to it yet. But yeah, the app is good. Um, but I would, I would definitely, um, iterate that the app is best if you already know how to play the game because even knowing how to play the game when i bought the app i was a little confused with the layout because they're going more for you know graphic design and you know how, how it looks aesthetically right. makes sense um but it does make it a little bit different because like you know you're not able to see you have to hit some i think some buttons before you can able to, able to see like what's ahead in the next uh, season or whatnot but yeah right I'll, well i'll teach it to you okay sounds good we'll make it happen so because yeah. Viticulture was pulled out from under me, I have to pivot. But I'm not that mad about it because I truly love this game. I won't go so far as to say like your friends and my friends from Thinker Theme or Maggie that I'm obsessed with it. But <laughs> Obsession is an excellent uh, game. Okay. And a okay. very good worker placement game and incredibly thematic. Just absolutely dripping with theme. Uh, in yes. this game, you're basically running a Victorian household that has seen better days. Uh, you're down on your luck. You don't have a lot of money. You don't have much influence. You don't have many good friends. And essentially, you're trying to build that up and host parties and events and, and invite guests to your home that kind of build your prowess back up, get you back into hmm. the you know the, one of the leading houses of that era. And uh, yeah, in that So you can game, marry your daughter off. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I've yeah. seen this show. <laughs> yeah, We've all that, seen this yep. show. <laughs> yeah. In Obsession, you are sending guests and workers at your disposal to host events, which will earn you money, reputation, victory points, more guests, and stuff like that. Um, and it is just everything you do makes sense. Like, it all works thematically. In my brain, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I obviously have to send two dudes and a butler to go golfing. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it makes sense. It, it it's makes, croquet, sir. Croquet. It's actually it's called croquet. lawn bowling. I think it's lawn bowling, according to the game. But <laughs> gotcha, uh, okay. Obsession is great, and one that I have really wanted to actually play with you, Dueling, because I think that you and Emily both would quite enjoy it. Um, so good. Oh, I'm sure. I need to get the upstairs, downstairs, and the Essex expansion, but... Uh, awesome game and it's made by like one dude uh dan halligan i believe uh, yes and that's like his baby and he did it and put it together and he's great great customer service to um awesome game totally recommend getting obsession or at least trying out i'm a little jealous that you All have right. it and i don't have it oh yeah I'm you don't have it why not have you played it uh no I haven't um I've been like itching to play it ever what? since I saw Maggie like you said like drooling over this game oh um, yeah gamer. like yeah. I'm like <laughs> oh man it's um you know I know this is one my wife loves viticulture because because of the theme and it, like you said it makes sense mm -hmm. and this is one that I think she will she's a big fan of Bridgerton so Bridgerton the board oh game, yeah I think yeah, yeah if you is, like Bridgerton is, and uh what's it called Pride and Prejudice I mean the title yeah. for Obsession is uh Pride intrigue and pre i don't know what it is but either way <laughs> it's really good game especially if you're into that kind of thing uh i don't know if there's a digital implementation of it but i'd love to play it with you sometime jazz let's we'll make it happen uh, let's cashing in on those bridgerton fans yeah pretty much <laughs> i think it is like sold out everywhere right now probably <laughs> owing a little bit to bridgerton to be honest <laughs> and of course yeah. thinker themer i'm sure they've pushed hundreds of copies dan halligan's way it's it's wild <laughs> oh um, i'm sure i yeah. I got to say right now that I feel great because none of mine have been solid, but I'm really worried about this one right You're here. I'm almost certain. I'm almost certain you guys are going to take my two, but I don't know. I We'll see. I would say you should Next. not be worried about this one. At okay, least for good, me. Good. I don't feel like any of the ones on my list are ones you would pick. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, they probably are. <laughs> yeah. My oh, pick gosh. for okay. best art in worker placement, best Best, most visually appealing table presence. There's two, and I still haven't decided. Right at this moment, I still haven't decided which one I'm going with. I think I gotta go with Everdell. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, okay, you didn't. That wasn't it. I thought. Okay. That was it. Whew. Okay. I thought that go. was it. Okay. Take Everdell. It looks great. I've never played it, and I didn't feel confident. Like I didn't do enough research on it. Sure. But it looks amazing. I it, had it two on amazing. there, and I now that it wasn't yours, I kind of regret not picking the other one. 
No, too late. Too uh, late. Uh, uh, Everdell is a great game. It's that, uh, oh gosh, I just had it in my head and now I've lost it. What is like, what, what is the book? Redwall, right? Redwall is kind of what it, like it, it appears to be. It's that, um, you know, the mice and all the woodland creatures and it's just so beautiful. The art is amazing. Um, the game Are you itself. about Root? No. I don't think you're talking about Everdell. No, I'm talking about Everdell. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Oh my <laughs> God, you were. <laughs> it was a joke. Jeez Louise. Get out of here. And uh, it, it's really good. It's not like, it's not one that's on my top 10. I know it fits into so many people's like top 10. Like Everdale is such a popular game. The collection right now on Kickstarter has 2.75 million, I think, as of discussing it right now. Ridiculous. Oh, wow. It is so well loved. Uh, Jazz is going to check me. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's no. It's a lot it, of money. It, 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 it's, a, it's a solid, it's a solid game. It's It was my number yeah. one pick for this. <laughs> oh, was it good? Okay, at least oh I stole goodness. yours. At least I that's stole twice yours. you've stolen his. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, that's what you get for going yes. middle jazz. <laughs> <laughs> but this is it. It really is a great game. Um, I've only played it with one of the expansions. Mm, Pearlbrook is the one that I played it with. I think I was trying to think of which one. I think there's like five expansions. Um, it's just expensive, and I haven't bought it myself because it's expensive. Uh, the collection on mm. Kickstarter is uh, is incredible value, such a good value. Uh, personally, I'm not big on wanting to support Starling Games. Um, I mean, I get that there are a ton of wonderful people that have worked on Everdell, uh, but for me personally, the game is good, but not so good that I really need it. Um, but it is yeah, keep, it is keep in my talking opinion, down no, your list. No, you haven't heard my finished. Keep it talking. is in my opinion <laughs> the most beautiful worker placement game there is. It's a solid pick, okay. uh, and, and, we'll see. and you you, we'll see. you bash the game that I thoroughly love. Um, it's high on oh, my do list. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it? Um, it? It, it's just I think the more you play it, the more you open up how you know how well it is designed. Um, but I like I said, I have heard people you know had their issues with Starling Games. Um, it's something that's just new to me. Like I said, I don't like thoroughly read up on all the news and all that stuff but when i looked at it i was like yeah i can mm-hmm. see why people have a bad or sour taste in their mouth i guess yeah. i would have that same i'm not telling well. you how to feel so, yeah exactly you know so I, I think that's fair enough so oh man i, I do want to play it gonna, more uh, i've with? only played it the one time and i i really enjoyed it but i i would like to play again and see if like you said if it if it even gets better and better the more you play and the more you understand the combos because man there are so many combos happening in that game I do think the there way that are. the game ends after the seasons, how like I can end three turns before Jazz, who ends two turns before Doolin, <laughs> is kind of weird sometimes. But I also think it's kind of cool. It's it's it depends on if that's something that you think you'd enjoy because I can see that being a turnoff for some people, but also something that's really engaging. For- yeah, I think it's something that uh, people have to get used to, especially people who are new to that mm-hmm. kind of mechanic. Because there are, there are some games that do have that you know built into you know how they how they work progressively like viticulture kind of has that same thing you can progress into the next season before everyone else does um but yeah i i I do like it it's something that i honestly had to get used to and it was something that i had to i had to teach others that that, you know of course are just new to the hobby but let alone new to worker placement like oh yeah i'm in i'm in this this round or whatever the next season and you're still back in that season so it has a little bit of a slight learning curve but i think it's streamlined enough that people can catch on quick definitely so, all right. Uh, what am I going to leave Doolin with? Um, let's start. I'm, off this, I'm so, happy so, if you take one of mine because, in all honesty, I don't know how to pick between these two. So go ahead. That's where I was. All right. So, so my pick, and I'm I'm stuck between two. Um, I have I have four listed here right now. Um, so I'm going to go with an Elf Creek Games design. Um, okay. Elf Ooh. Creek. Okay. Yep. You're taking one El- of them. Elf Creek has some solid, solid games that just. Beautiful, just have some beautiful components. Um, just have some awesome table presence. And while many might think that my pick is going to be, um, you know, dripping in honey, um, my That's pick is going to be a- at Atlantis Rising. Um, what? Atlantis Rising is just something about the artwork on the cards, um, the, the the thematic look of it. Um, I was one who's always, you know, was really big on this, just the story of Atlantis. But seeing how this, like, you know, the board, you know, has these modular pieces that, you know, has a thematic push of, you know, it's flooding and these pieces, these tiles are coming off as you're going. It's a cooperative worker placement game and there's not many. Um, 
But when you, of course, get like the back to Kickstarter or you have the deluxe components, you know, the components are just are beautiful. No matter if you back any game or, or purchase any game from Elf Creek, whether you're buying the retail or the deluxe version, you're getting a, a, a premium quality game. Um, and it's one that, yeah, it just does. This is the game that turned me on to what Elf Creek does. And I legit back mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. that they come out with now because of it. Yeah. Um, so that they do this is, yeah. gorgeous games. Yes. Yeah, so well, that's my pick, Atlantis huh. Rising. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll will say I, I don't want to give too much away because, I, well, actually, it doesn't matter because I'm going to go yeah, first you, in the next one. So it doesn't yeah. matter. Atlantis Rising was my number two pick for the last category because ah, that's ranked okay. 120 in worker placements. Uh, it, it's a co-op game, right? Like, a, a, yeah. and which speaks to me because I love, I love co-op games more than competitive. Uh, but. Yeah, no, it 100% is a game that I'll probably end up getting. Would have Good. already been on my way to my house uh, if it wasn't for the fact my other pick is on my way to my house Ooh. right now. So, uh, <laughs> and, and so uh, I'm, I'm not going to say what it is just yet. Um, Are you going with Honey Buzz? I not, mainly okay. because okay. I need one of I need to get rid of one of them. And uh, honestly, Honey Buzz is one that because people know I like bees, Mm -hmm. uh, people have actually sent me uh, suggestions uh, multiple times saying, hey, you have to play Honey Buzz. So it's one that I I want to play really, really badly. It'll probably be one of my favorites, but because I haven't played it yet, it will not be on my list. Instead, uh, what's going at the top of mine, I don't feel bad about this game. Here's a different game I've never played. (laughs) This is a game that I have played a little, like a round or two of, off camera but i helped jesse on quackalope unbox and it is anachrony uh and this game that's the arnaki game i was talking about yeah i know i know i i was i I was playing dumb on purpose hoping that neither of you would take it um but this game is just dripping with art like my goodness he like Jesse just kept giving me tons and tons of pictures. Like I think there's just an, like one one of the booklets that it comes with is just plain art. Mm. Uh, and the like even if you threw all of that out, the board is fantastic looking. This post apocalyptic uh, like uh, council building that's super awesome. And not to mention the mechs, which are all really really cool to look at. And and I I, I think this game is amazing. I, I don't own it actually, uh, but. It, it's incredible. I've gotten to actually, you know, at least hold the pieces yeah. and <laughs> and look at it. Well, Anachrony is one I'd love to try, and I believe mm. it's on uh, Mr. Jazz's there top five games I need to remove off my shelf of shame opportunity. <laughs> yes, know. I'm yes. curious. Have you have you had a chance yet, or is it still there? It's still on that list, um, but I have a friend who's local um, who we're trying to set up a day, you know, mask it up, and, and, and he's going to teach this one to me. So um, it's one that I have, I've set up, I've you know, kind of gone through a round, you know, solo, and then I was like, oh, I'll just play this the next day, and then the next day came, and then I was like, oh, I guess I got to box it up. But um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it left my collection. It left my collection, and then it was one that I like had to have back in the collection. So it is. It's it's up there, right? There. I oh I see it. Yeah, I see the bottom left corner, the bottom left corner <laughs> of it. Go. You don't have the <laughs> infinity box, clearly, Jazz. Um, oh no no no, I don't. Um, yeah, I don't have the infinity box, but um, yeah, Yet. it's one. Even like the the little um, what do they call those? The exo suits. I do have the exo suit expansion up yeah. there too. So, you know, I guess just like you said, the you know that that adds to the art element and the, the table presence of it, right? You're like you're actually taking your worker, putting it into the exo suit, and then you know yeah. sending them yeah. out to where they go. Yeah, it's that it's is a really good one. Cool. Solid solid pick, Duel, and I like it. I appreciate it. Uh, my last one is maybe the one I'm most excited about, oh. even though it probably won't give me very many points uh, with anyone at all probably i don't it makes me excited though because it's my like you know like uh unique one i guess and this is for any of them outside of the bgg top 100 worker placement so i guess for all of us it's going to be picks that aren't necessarily everyone's favorites uh but this is number 108 and it is kitchen rush Ah, Uh, i have it on the way and it is a very very unique worker placement game in the sense that it's cooperative uh, and you, the things you're controlling are actually like, uh, what are they called? The time, the sand uh, timers, sand. Yeah. The sand timers. 
and it counts down to 30 seconds. Uh, each round is four, four minutes. And as soon as your sand runs out, you can move again. And it's this really unique game of, you know, taking orders and being in the kitchen as all of your other teammates are uh, trying to collect the ingredients they need and use the stove and wash the dishes. And, and everybody's on top of each other, kind of having that. Uh, I, I, I watched Thinker Themer play, and they explained that it's similar in nature to, to Chinatown, where everybody's just shouting at each other at yeah. the same time. And it creates this really unique experience that... Uh, I've not really had in very many other games. Uh, and so I'm really excited to play this. I think it's going to be a regular at my table, whether we're on the channel or off. I, I'm, I'm pumped for it. It's one I've uh, wanted to try I, for a while, too. Well, now it's on, my, on the way to my house. Nice. I promised Max that there was one game that I researched that I did order, and I wouldn't tell him until we were on camera. And that this Oh, is that it. was and it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah this okay. Is, this is, it's Kitchen Rush. It's on. Well... It's not necessarily on the way because it's like impossible to find in America, but I I pre-ordered it on uh like cool what is the cool one cool, cool stuff, stuff Inc. Inc. or something yeah CSI. yeah and it's supposed to be back in stock sometime mid March which is now, now so yeah. hopefully <laughs> hopefully it will be really soon when I get it and I get to play it. All right, I'm pretty confident that neither of my picks are going to get taken. So I'm excited to see what you have to offer, Jazz. And I will disconnect from this Discord call if you do take one of my picks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to go with uh, a game that I had in my collection. I, I, I just never got it to the table outside of playing it solo. It is good. Um, it is, if you want to think of... Um, Jurassic Park the board game and if you want to think of a game that is the best dino game out there it is Dinogenics which sits at 877 on BGG um, which is a, I think it's a couple spots out of the top 100 of worker placement games but this one is, is awesome like you know you're crafting your um, your dinosaurs you're, you're getting the DNA to cre create the dinosaurs put them in your park and if the dinosaurs you know they over overrun your if you don't put them in the, in the correct padding they overrun the, the you know the park they they're eating um your visitors in the park um and they're destroying different uh buildings because you're trying to you know obviously create different um attractions in your park for people to come in and yes if you want the real um you know i guess jurassic park the board game this is it doesn't doesn't say that um what's the other one from pandasaurus uh dinosaur island dinosaur which island I, I, yeah I, I enjoy it. It's a solid, solid game, but this one definitely feels more like playing Jurassic Park, the board game. Um, I'm excited to see what the the dinosaur world is going to be like. But yeah, this one is mm -hmm. one I think sometimes gets is is hard to find. Um, and then if you get get it with the expansion that adds like the aquatic like you know padding um, where you could put them like the water dinosaurs and all that stuff. It's a it's a solid, solid game. Um, and it's fairly I th new, I, right? I mean, not like 2020, but 2019, I think, or something. I want to say it came out in 2019, and then in 2020, uh, early 2020 is when the expansion came out, or mid-2020 is when the expansion okay. came out. And um, my copy is, um, I think I, I remember if I sold it or traded away, but it, it's a, a guy that's local to me. So it's like, I, I wasn't, I didn't feel bad. N I didn't feel bad not uh, not having it because I can just call him up and say, hey, can I borrow Di Dinogenics or just get together with him after all the, all, <laughs> right. all this madness and say, hey, let's play some Dinogenics. Um, so Dave, if you're listening, I'm going to be playing some Dinogenics with you, uh, you know, once we get, get a chance to. <laughs> You've definitely sold me because I love dinosaur themed stuff. Oh, I yeah. was huge. Like before board games, I was huge into uh, specific video games like Ark Survival Evolved. I don't know if you guys either of you play much. I know what video it is. Games, Never played it. It's an incredible dinosaur game, and it just got me so deep into like the movies and like all of that stuff. So uh, you've I've written down Honga and Dinogenics. Thank you for giving me at least two to immediately go out and look <laughs> at prices of. And I what's would... cool, it's like it, it it's super streamlined. It's not hard to play. Like it's something that oh, you know really? you can you, yeah you can teach fairly newer gamers this game. Um, you know, so somebody who's you know casually played board games, I would say definitely you know check it out. It's not going to be hard to to teach. Fairly fairly streamlined. That's cool. I didn't realize that from from looking at it. It looks like a heavier game just just from aesthetically. I don't know. I thought you were going to pick that or dominant species. That was my other. Uh, thought that you might have picked, but I'm happy to see Dinogenic. 
here. Yeah, I knew mine wasn't going to get stolen. And I hope I don't get yelled at for this one. I'm trying to figure it out. I've only played this game one time. I honestly never thought I'd play a game by this designer. Ever. Just never thought I'd play a game by this designer. Listen, Max, or, Pandemic is not a worker placement game. It's a bad game, though. We know how much you oh, love or, Pandemic. <laughs> Just kidding. Nor did I ever <laughs> think that I would so enjoy a game about bus routes. And this is Bus uh, by Splatter Games. Gotcha. Yeah, is that a worker placement? Does that yeah, is that qualify, Jess? It, 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 yeah, I think it's worker placement. It's on the list, so I went with it what BGG says. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's definitely not like a pure worker placement, but you're you're placing workers on this track on the side of the board as an action selection, basically. Uh, if you want to go first and have priority in this action, you go there, and then it goes down the line. Um, and then I don't know if this would be worker placement or not, because I guess not. Um, but you also place your little pieces on the board. Um, and so you're like blocking off people from stealing different places and trying to mess with their plans. Um, and uh, once you run out of workers, like you're done. Like you have 22 workers, I think, or 22 little, little squares. And you can place any of any number of them that you want every round. And if you run out, your game is over. So there's like a bit of a strategy there of do I use more this round because there's some cool actions available or do I try and like scarcely use them and then at the end of the game have five when no one else has any like it's a nice little balance and uh, it was I, I was just scared of splatter to be honest and bus was not that hard it was very thinky but the the decision making is the tough part the mechanics are easy the theme actually works makes sense you're trying to send people on a bus route from work to the bar and the bar to home and and repeat 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 and uh it, it's it worked so well and i really liked it and i've only played it one time i played it with uh sean and jesse and it's one of those oh, that... okay i was about to ask was this the one that jan was with you guys yes too? Yeah, yeah yeah jan was there too yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. i watched this video yeah, yeah it looked fun it's, it looked fun it's really good and i i just i want to play it again it's an expensive game um, for for what it is, and I think most splatter games just are just fairly expensive for what they are. I don't I don't know why, but uh, it's not one I've bought yet. But I really really liked it, and it was probably one of the most puzzly games I've ever played. Where like I'm just sitting there every turn, absolutely racking my brain trying to figure out what I can do to get this guy to the bar and this guy home. And there's a little time travel element too, where you can stop and rewind time to make them want to go to a different stop. Anyways, that's Bus. It's outside of the top 100. I believe it's actually sitting on the BGG overall ranking at 814, which seems quite absurdly low for me for for this game, at least in my opinion. I had a really great time with it. Totally recommend you checking it out. Okay, that's nice. that. That that's our list of 5. Uh we'll run Feel good. Yeah, we'll, we'll put them on the Feel screen. Feel way right better now. than I yeah. thought. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You guys we'll be did on the great right like, now, and we'll uh, that's a solid we'll run list. through them a little bit. But yeah, yeah. Who do you think had the better list, Jazz? As the person who's, I mean, you're gonna say yourself, not yourself. Who do you think had the best list out of you two? I'm just curious. You know what? Don't uh, say that. You know what? Doolin's gonna win. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't know. I'm gonna be honest. I can tell you that I was surprised with Doolin. Yeah, you know, just the fact that Doolin was telling me like. No, I don't. This is like the least, you know, the mechanic that I've least played. You know, I was surprised with some of his picks because a lot of them are games that. I've either played or games that I've you know thoroughly wanted to play, um, and and mm -hmm. they're all solid games. I think you know <laughs> what gets me about what this is my just my favorite mechanic in general. But for me, when I started playing worker placement games, it's just something about um, you know trying to think things through and also having that you know like in essence like this draft, right? Like you are waiting for your turn and you're hoping that that person does not take your pick yeah, yeah and when they do absolutely. like you have to completely switch you know switch your game plan and trying to figure out how you can do it. and that's what i like about it you know it's not a lot of you know obviously it's straight euro right it's not a lot of take that but it's this you know how are you going to um how are you going to shift gears when your optimal play is no longer there and that's what i like right yeah. Jazz, what you just said is something I'm realizing is a habit I'm getting into, which is when I know that I'm thoroughly outclassed in something that's happening in the future, 
I dedicate way too much time <laughs> to trying to figure it out. Like when I played <laughs> TI with Max for the first time with a person who owned it and like did a really good job with it, I listened to like hours and hours of podcasts <laughs> on TI before I played, like on what oh to do God. as a specific character. No, I, I, I get way too excited about things. So that's probably why, but. Yeah, I watched 30 hours of YouTube Table Knots <laughs> crew, wild. so you don't have to. I watched yeah, it. You don't yeah, have exactly. to. I think I clicked on the uh, Dice Tower top 10 and uh, like used the scroll and just went and saw what they had. Real quick. <laughs> I watched that entire video. I, mean, I did some research myself on BGG, but as far as video uh, resources, I was just like looking at the little thumbnail in the bottom right that showed when I scrubbed through, and I was like, okay, so they really like this game. <laughs> That's basically all yeah. I did. <laughs> Honestly, I was really nervous, Jazz, until I watched your video with that you did recently with Thinker Themer on your top board game components, and I just realized, like, this guy's super chill, like, it's going to be really fun, and honestly got a couple of uh, of ideas like uh, Honey Buzz and Everdell. I knew those, and Viticulture, you, me you mentioned that too. I knew some of those were going to get brought up, and it made me really excited to play some more of these games because this is, again, a, a, an area I'm a novice in, but clearly is... is I think on the rise, in all honesty, especially that deck building. Um, oh yeah, the combo with Arnak and Doom Imperium yeah. and stuff, like, yeah. and Endless Winter. Th yeah, we're only going to see more and more of these. So, like, I think in five years we probably need to do this again. And all see right, put it on your playing. calendar, Jazz. Five years yeah, from yeah, today, yeah. March sixteenth, two thousand twenty-six. We're meeting back. Got it. Back. Got it. Got it. Got it. That's yeah. When, this is when Jazz is in a nursing home because he's so much older than we are. Oh man. <laughs> Thank, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot there. Like, you know. Oh, that was mean, dude. But, that was mean. But, 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 I, but I will tell your audience that when you guys found out my age, you're like, man, you look so much younger. That you know, I feel I feel good. You guys yeah, can't I'm see not my gonna grades tell here, which is my a good audience. thing. Yeah, I'm not going to tell them your age because that's up to you to disclose, but you look way <laughs> younger than I thought you were. Now they're all going to think he's like... Yeah, I so thought we could really be roommates, old. Jazz. I didn't realize you could be my father. Like, come on, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man, this is going to be awesome. This has been. I, I can't Nots wait to see the comments. <laughs> oh yeah, they, they're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. This has been Table Knots with Jazz from the Lobby of Hobbies. Please check out his link in the description. He makes excellent videos, and he's just an all-around awesome person. Uh, give him a subscription and check out what he puts out. It's, it's quality, quality stuff. Jazz, is there anything else you want to say before we close up shop for this video? No, thanks a lot, guys. I look forward to this. Um, you know, honestly, d don't forget to bring me back. I, I want to try that that Appin video. So, you know, I'll play some board oh, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you'll be you know, back. And, I, and, We're I've, gonna, got, like, and I've got a lot. call and uh, schedule stuff. <laughs> So yeah, I'm looking right, forward well, to it. Thanks for man. being here. All right, Doolin, thank you. Jazz, thank you. <laughs> no problem. The connection's a little. We're waiting like a few seconds. It's a little off, but it's all right. We're making it work. It's all good. We're making it work. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Let us know down in the comments which list you thought was best. Um, Doolin's probably gonna edit this in some type of way that makes him like say vote for mine. No, don't do that. Vote no. for Jazz's or Max's. It's that's just that's just the right way to go about it. We're gonna tally up the comments and we're gonna put out a little comment that we'll pin after a, a week or so to see who wins. Uh, so we appreciate you supporting the channel, supporting Jazz, the Lobby of Hobbies, and uh, participating in our uh, draft with him. So uh, let us know who won, and we will see you next time.